Today, we're gonna to take this Power BI report and turn it into this. To guide the redesign of our report today, I'm gonna to be covering five data visualization principles that are guaranteed to improve any report. Those principles are balance, proper spacing, minimalism, functionality, and intentional use of color. The first thing we're gonna go over is balance. What I mean by that is the way we organize our report. Where you place your visuals on the page actually matters. People naturally read reports in a zigzag pattern going from left to right, top to down. Because of this, you should lay out your visuals in a way that complements this pattern going from left to right. People also like to view things in patterns that fit together. This means we should group our visuals in sections that make sense. Let's go ahead and apply these principles to our report. You can see here that right now our visuals are kind of plopped onto the page. Let's go ahead and fix that by moving our visuals around in a way that's easier to read and easier to comprehend. There we go. Our report's already looking a little bit better. It's easier to read and it makes a lot more sense. Now let's Let's move on to the next step in our redesign, proper spacing. All right, the idea here is that you want your report to breathe. This means that you shouldn't cram your visuals together, but you also don't want too many visuals on a single page. In our example here, we really only have three visuals, three KPIs, and three slicers. This is a pretty comfortable amount of visuals. Our goal here is to give ample space between our visuals. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so our report starting to look a little better with just that. But another way that we can exaggerate the spacing in between our our visuals without actually creating more space is by adding a visual border. Once the border is added to each of our visuals, we're going to make the color for that border a very light gray in order to maintain subtlety throughout the report. Then we're going to round the corners for each of our visuals to make it look a little bit more modern and give it more of a cozy flair. We don't want to round the corners too much or then it just starts to look kind of silly, but we just want to round the corners slightly. We're just adding a little bit more effect. There we go. So that looks pretty nice. All right, so now that we've organized our report and we've spaced out our visuals, let's move on to the third step in our redesign, minimalism. What this step essentially boils down to is removing any clutter and noise. The goal should be to cut out anything that isn't absolutely necessary. Doesn't add value, we're getting rid of it. This means things like access titles, access values. In most cases, we could just use data labels instead, shortening our title and sometimes even removing legends, though in our example here, we don't have any legends. Once we remove the clutter from our visuals, the report can breathe a little and it's a little easier to look at. This is helpful because the less noise we have on our page, the faster we can focus on the things that really matter and the faster we can develop insights from our visuals. The goal should always be to make our report as easy to read as possible for our end users. And with that, let's move on to the next step of our report, functionality. Again, we want our report to be as easy to read as possible. And we also want the user interaction to be as smooth as possible. One thing that means is giving our report interactivity and making that interactivity very smooth. For example, let's look at our slicers. Up to this point, you've probably been saying to yourself, Matt, when are you gonna change these ugly looking slicers? Well, we're finally there. The default setting on slicers is usually a list. The list option has its place, but I usually find that the drop down option most often is the better choice. It keeps our filters minimal. In addition to that, we're also going to toggle on the select all feature to allow our users to more easily select all. The last thing we're going to do here is adjust the interactions on our slicers where it makes sense. For instance, let's take a look at this line chart. We really don't need that visual changing when we filter to a specific year because it's not really helpful to see a line chart plotted with only a single point. So what we want is for that visual to stay static. To achieve this, we're gonna to go to Edit Interactions, select our year slicer, and then disable the line chart from the interactions. Now the visual will stay static, and when we filter by year, that visual won't change. So whenever you're designing a report, always keep in mind functionality. Ask yourself, is the report experience smooth and how can I make it better for users? If you have that mindset and you work towards optimizing your report, it's gonna look a lot better in the end. Okay, so we have one more step to cover before we can call this report good. Let's look at our colors. Colors do matter when it comes to data visualization. There are a couple primary reasons for this. The first is that we want our colors to make sense. Generally, the color we assign to our metrics should stay consistent throughout the report. For example, if you have sales represented with blue in one visual, you don't then want to have the 
the same metric, sales, represented as orange in another visual. This is a common mistake people make even when we're just looking at one metric with different data points. But this mistake happens most often when people are working with more than one metric in a single visual. What ends up happening is as you look through the different visuals in the report, the colors aren't consistent between specific metrics. This can end up being a bit confusing for end users. And remember, we want our report to be as easy to read as possible. So color is gonna create fluidity in our report. In our example here, every visual is measuring sales. So I Ideally, we want sales to be represented as the same color in every visual to make it easier to understand. But right now, each visual is a separate color. This makes it a little bit difficult to understand at first glance. But before I make any changes, let's go over the second reason why colors matter in our visuals. And that reason is aesthetic purposes. You want to go with colors that are visually appealing. This means avoiding colors that have a very harsh contrast or maybe colors that don't have enough contrast. Proper contrast matters because it either adds to or takes away from the readability of our report. And as a side note, we also want to keep keep in mind a colorblind audience. Sometimes standard colors like red and green together are actually difficult to read for certain colorblind audiences. Because of this, it's important to research types of colors that go together and work best with a colorblind audience if you have any people like that in your organization. So let's go ahead and update our visuals to be the same color. And while we're at it, let's pick a color that's a little bit less harsh. Again, since all of our visuals are representing sales, we're gonna give them the same color. And we're gonna go with this nice dark blue color. We're also gonna update the background to our report page. Personally, I usually like to go with lighter off-white tones, whether that's a silver or a cream color. In this case, I'm gonna go with a ghost white silver color. This provides a subtle but nice contrast against the visuals themselves. One more thing we're gonna change is the color of our text from black to dark gray. This doesn't make a huge difference to our report, but I like the aesthetic it provides to our overall color scheme. This softens the report a bit more while still maintaining proper contrast. By the way, if you're unsure of where to find nice color palettes for your visuals, tools like colors, coolers, colors, uh, however you say it, are great for this. They have tons of nice palettes to choose from, as well as a color generator and a contrast checker. And this is usually my go-to color resource. And with this, our report is finished. Our dashboard looks much better from where we started. And if you follow these steps, I guarantee yours will too. Our report looks good, but best of all, it's practical and it's functional. All five of the data visualization principles we went over today can and should be implemented into every one of your reports wherever possible. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.